Welcome to the Financial Interest YouTube channel. My name's Dan. In this week's video, I'm going to cover Phil Town's three different valuation methods. And we're going to look at a classic example from one of Phil's favorite stocks, Chipotle Mexican Grill. And we'll take a look at the different prices each of these valuation methods gives us. So I'm not going to spend a long time on each different valuation method or this video is probably going to end up like an hour long. So what I will do is um, if there's any gaps that you think when you're watching this one, you can actually go and look at the individual videos I made for each of the different valuations and that should give you all the information you need. So I'll leave those details down in the description for you. So let's get on with the video. So before getting into the valuations, all the usual things apply. We're looking for a company that's got meaning to us, that's within our circle of competence. We want a strong, durable economic moat and a great management team as well. And finally, we want to be able to buy the company at a margin of safety. And this is where the valuations come in. So first, we're going to look at the 10 cap valuation method. And this is a method which is normally used in commercial real estate to understand the rate of return of a rental property. So first, let's look at what we need for the 10 cap numbers so first we need the owner's earnings and then we need to know the current market price and finally we need the total number of shares outstanding to give us a per share amount so let's say I had a rental property and I know that I can rent this out for $28,000 per year. By looking at other similar properties, I know it's going to cost me roughly $4,000 a year in maintenance, just small expenses to actually just keep the house up to living standards and be able to let it out to tenants. So this is actually leaves me with $24,000 a year as the owner of that property. So if I can pay $240,000 for this property, then my cap rate on that investment is going to be 10% or a 10 cap rate. If however, the property was 240,000 and I was only able to recoup 12,000 from that, then obviously my rate is now a five cap rate. And a five cap rate is considered quite a decent rate or an average rate for a rental property. So by going to a 10 cap, we're actually building in a margin of safety for this. So now we're in the 10 cap tab, and this is just a basic spreadsheet I made using the formulas and things from the invested book. Here we are with Chipotle Mexican Grill. We can see the cash flow from operating activities, and this is for the trailing 12 months. We've got 960 million 785, so that's uh, just under a billion we're looking at there. And then we've got the total capital expenditures for the last year, which is 447 million. And what I had to do here to find the growth capex is go and look at the number of restaurants that they've opened in the last year. So I found that they'd opened 199 restaurants. And based on the previous 10K, the price was about 1.1 million per restaurant. So whenever you're opening new restaurants, obviously this is a growth thing. And what I only need for the owner's earnings is actually the maintenance capital expenditure amount. And we can see here that that's just the 228263. So now we can calculate the owner's earnings by taking the total cash flow from operating activities and then removing the maintenance capital expenditure amount. And this gives us the owner's earnings of 732522. So what we're doing here then is multiplying this amount by 10 because we need it to be a 10 cap rate and our minimum requirement here is the 10%. So we can see here that this gives us a market cap value for this valuation of um, 7.325 billion. And then in order to get that onto a per share basis, we've got just over 28 million shares outstanding and this is the current share price and that gives the company a current market cap of 43 billion. So you can see we're well off there with, um, with the current market price. And it actually shows here that the actual cap rate based on the current stock price is 1.7. So in order to buy this uh, 10 cap, we need to get this for $260.28. And one main thing to note about the 10 cap price is that it doesn't actually have any growth built into it. And some people would say that that's actually one of the weaknesses of this uh, valuation method. But actually, if you can get it for that price, then any growth is kind of a bonus. But what you will find is that obviously, normally speaking, companies that are growing faster will demand a higher price. So another company that's growing two times as fast as this will still have the same 10 cap price. Although actually the other company is probably a better company because they're growing their um, owner's earnings faster. So next up is the payback time valuation. So I'll just read a paragraph from the invested book by Daniel and Phil Tan because I think this gives a really good idea of what payback time valuation actually is. 
So the payback time method is used by investors to put a price on a company that they're not going to sell for a long time. What they want is a fast return on their investment, so their risk of losing money disappears. Rather like a gambler taking his money off the table and playing with house money. What my dad calls the payback time is just what it sounds like, the number of years it takes to get your whole purchase price back. And what we need for the payback time numbers are the free cash flow. And this is calculated by taking the cash from operating activities and subtracting the capital expenditure. Or you might also see that called purchase of property, plant and equipment when you're looking at the statements. And next we need the estimated future growth rate for the next eight years and we need the shares outstanding in order to give us a per share amount. So I'll just mention a couple of things regarding the future growth rate. So first thing we can do is we can go and look back at historic growth rates of things like the sales, the earnings, free cash flow and equity. That's going to give us a good idea of what the company's done up to this stage, but that's not going to tell the whole story. So we also need to read the financial statements to try and understand what the future possibilities are for this business. Then we need to kind of make an estimate of what we think the business will actually do in the future. What's the total addressable market? Is there a lot of room for the business to grow? And we can find this information by looking at management discussions or any articles on things like Seeking Alpha or Wall Street Journal just to get an idea of what we think they can actually grow by in the future. And then we can compare our growth estimates with that of the analysts in something like Yahoo Finance. So here we've got the starting point for the free cash flow, which is 513,622. And then we're going to grow that by 15% for the next eight years. And the reason we're looking for eight years is mentioned in the invested book. And this is because in the public markets, investors are prepared to pay 16 times the free cash flow to be able to buy the business. So by demanding eight years, we have our 50% margin of safety there. And you will see here that uh, the free cash flow starts there and then we're moving to 590665 and then just keep growing it until the eighth year where the free cash flow is going to be 1.5, nearly 1.57 billion. And over here on the right, this gives us the cumulative free cash flow. And this is what we're actually using to value the business. So this gives us a total cumulative cash flow of um, 8.1 billion. And this amount is what we should be prepared to pay for the entire company. But just to make it a little bit easier, I've broken this down into a per share basis. So here's the shares outstanding. And that gives us a current free cash flow per share of $18.25. And in order for us to be able to buy this and get our money back within eight years, we need to pay 288.09. And what this is doing is dividing this 8.1 billion amount by the shares outstanding in order to get to the 288.09. So now here we've got our second valuation for the company. And we can also um, just look at another scenario if we change the amount to 20%. And then this shows that our eight year payback time price has now gone up to 361.33. So I'll compare that as another scenario at the end. Finally, let's look at the margin of safety valuation. This method is more like a traditional discounted cash flow analysis, but it uses earnings per share as the starting point. And for the margin of safety calculation, the numbers we need are the earnings per share, that's for the trailing 12 months, the estimated future growth rate, we've obviously managed to calculate that in the previous example for the payback time, but in this case we actually need to grow the earnings per share for the next 10 years. And then we need a future price to earnings ratio. And finally we need our minimum acceptable rate of return for the investment. So here we are now in the margin of safety calculation. And we can see that the earnings per share for the trailing 12 months was 24.94. We've got our future growth rate of 15% and we've got our future earnings per share of $100.90. And this is just basically like a future value calculation. It's going to take the earnings per share amount and grow that by 15% compounded for a period of 10 years. Then we'll get the earnings per share amount of 100.90. So to get to the future PE, we're just going to double the future growth rate. That's Phil's general rule of thumb for this. But there's one caveat, and it, we need to make sure that the future PE is not higher than it's historically been for the last 10 years. And you'll be able to find that on various charting softwares as well. But I did check it out, and it was a lot higher than 30. So for 30, we're fine. And we get a future value by multiplying our future earnings per share by our future PE ratio. So that's the $100.90 times the 30 PE. 
and here we have our minimum acceptable rate of return and this is 15% because when we're investing in an individual company we're looking for better returns than the market average over the long run and this is so we can justify spending the time on researching individual stocks. We can see that this gives us an intrinsic value of 748.20 and this is just a present value calculation so it's just doing the reverse what we did for the earnings per share but now we're actually dividing the future value back by 15% a year to get the present day figure. We still need to be applying a margin of safety of 50% to this and that means our buy price based on that would be 374.10. So we can see that this is well, well below the current uh, market price. So it would suggest that the stock is currently fairly significantly overvalued. But of course, this is going to change if you're adjusting your future growth rate. So if now we suddenly said, as in the previous example with the payback time, if we wanted to look at a 20% and obviously doubling the 20, the future PE to 40, then we're looking at a current share price of um, 1532 and actually if we can grow the earnings faster then we're going to end up with an intrinsic value of around the price of the stock at the moment obviously we still need to apply the 50 percent margin of safety but that brings our buy price a lot higher so a lot is going to depend on what future growth rate you assign and this is where all the research you've done previously is going to come in handy for that so now let's go and take a look at the valuations we've just made and compare them side by side. So let's look at the first set of valuations and this is using a 15% growth rate. So the 10 cap is actually, as I mentioned before, is the same regardless because it doesn't take into account any growth. So this price is $260.28. And then moving on to the payback time, we've got $288.09. And finally, the margin of safety, which is 374.10. So now we can move on to the next slide where we're going to look at the 20% growth. And here we can see, obviously, the 10 cap is the same, but the payback time has increased to 361.33. And the margin of safety price has increased to 763.41. So you can see there that the change in the growth rate makes a huge difference. And we can actually start buying in at the highest of these prices. So in both cases here, we'd be buying in at the margin of safety price. So we can see that all of our valuations are significantly less than the current share price, which would suggest that Chipotle is actually significantly overvalued at the moment. So we wouldn't actually be able to buy into the stock. But there's been plenty of opportunities in recent years to actually buy it much closer to a margin of safety price. And that's because they've been going through a number of different events relating to their restaurants. So we can see that this article here actually um, lists some of the outbreaks that they had in their restaurants between uh, 2015 and 2018. So we can see that more than 1,100 people were involved in these outbreaks. And if we just scroll down, we can see um, mentions. They've got Clostridium. I don't even know what that is. And then they've got norovirus, uh, another norovirus and also E. coli in 2015 and Salmonella as well in 2015. So they were really suffering around this time, which is why this stock really took a hit. And looking at the history of the stock price, we can see that obviously we go in here to 2015 and then we saw, you know, it kind of, it had kind of reached a peak at around nearly $750 um, in 2015. And then it dropped significantly and stayed kind of really low for quite a few years. We can see it sort of bottoms out in 2018 at 255. And that's obviously a big drop since um, the end of 2015. I mean, I've not looked at the exact data from the free cash flow and things like that, but that looks like could have been a potential buying opportunity, as could the uh, pandemic, which you can see. If you managed to just get in before, before it went crazy, you could have got... Uh, here we are in March at 566 and obviously now it's kind of done a big runaway uh, although it's down now it was at an all-time high only in September and that was just uh, heading towards $2,000 per share. So I'll just add a couple more points to this before we end the video. So one thing that Phil mentioned during the workshop is you don't actually need to have a 50% margin of safety value if you've got a deep understanding of the company and you've bought into it before. This is why I use the example of Chipotle Mexican Grill because he's bought and sold out of the stock 
two or three times, I believe. So of course, each time you're learning more about it, you've got a deep knowledge of the business already. So you don't need to demand a 50% margin of safety. You could perhaps buy in at a 30% margin of safety or something like that. So that's one thing to bear in mind when you're looking at stock valuations. And also be careful to make sure that if you're getting a price that suggests it's on sale, but the stock is at a record high, you might be slightly out with your valuations. There needs to be an event going on within the industry or the company specifically, or perhaps even a macro event like COVID for actually the company to be on sale. So that's just for a little bit of caution when looking at the valuations. So that's it for the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give us a like and also consider subscribing to the channel as well if you haven't already. And let me know if you've got any comments regarding the valuations. Always interested to know what you've got to say regarding that. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.